Periods are awful, inconvenient, excruciating, and you aren't supposed to talk about them, which only makes it worse. A woman in her lifetime uses, on average, 11,000 sanitary products. This amounts to 18,450 pounds on pads, tampons, and pain relief. And the average period costs around 492 pounds annually. For women on the streets, this is a price they just cannot afford. If you are a woman, having your period is bad enough at home. Now imagine that you have no roof over your head, you only own what you're wearing, and any money that you do have, you have to spend on food. You shouldn't have to decide between having a pad or having lunch. Some women have to humiliate themselves by asking strangers for help. Some have to get creative with the ways that they keep clean when they have their periods. Some are forced to steal products, some use plastic bags, paper towels, cotton balls, or clothing in place of hygiene products. It is demoralizing, and it makes living on the streets worse than ever. I had never really thought about the difficulties for women living on the streets, and it only crossed my mind over the winter months as many homeless people moved into a much more public area of Truro. And then I began to think. My brain was buzzing and ideas were flying through my mind. My idea is simple, and so I assumed that somebody must have done it already. But I couldn't find anything. And I was shocked to realize that these women have no access to these essential items. And so I made it my mission. But what are the essentials? Well, of course, there are pads and tampons. These are basic necessities, but they aren't accessible to women, even though a man could walk into a homeless shelter and be given free condoms on the NHS. My next thought was about practicality. What would I want if I was a homeless woman? And the first, first thing that came to mind was clean underwear. They are sometimes able to get a hold of this, but it is often old and used, and so this was a must-have. My next thought was about the cramps. This is where the heat pads come in. They are air-activated, and they stick straight onto the skin, and they can be thrown in the bin straight after use. It will help to make the ordeal of cramps a little less awful. And the last two ingredients of the box were baby wipes and deodorant. This is just to make the women feel a little cleaner while they're on their periods. I hit my first milestone. How would I get these boxes out to the women who needed them? So I began working with St. Petrick Society. They are a charity which provide accommodation and resettlement services to single homeless people in Cornwall. The amazing team at St. Petrock's guided me through the do's and the don'ts, and they showed me how beneficial these boxes would be. They also have direct access to the women who need these boxes from the Penzance and Truro Resource Centres. I was able to speak to a couple of their clients, one of which was a young man who said he wasn't from Cornwall, but he travelled around a lot. He told me that Cornwall was one of the worst places that he had seen for homelessness, and he'd witnessed firsthand some of the problems that women have to face. He had been asked to go into shops to buy pads and tampons because the women couldn't go in because they were banned just because they looked homeless. So even if they had the money, they still had no way of accessing these essential items. Street Comps launched on Crowdfunder in March with a target of £300. I'd estimated there to be around 30 homeless women in Cornwall, and so each box would cost £10, meaning people could make a small donation, but it would only take 30 people to reach my target. I got all my funding in 24 hours, and so I changed my target to £3,000. This way, all 30 of the women could have a whole year's worth of boxes. I went into supermarkets, and I started clearing the aisles of pads and tampons. I was given sympathetic looks, as people must have assumed that I'd had the world's worst periods. <laughs> I wanted to do something that would raise awareness and funds, and so I walked into Tesco's, and I asked to do a fundraiser. It scared me, but they said yes. And shortly after, I was standing at the front of the store with bin bags full of tampons and other donations that I had received. It was an amazing experience that I will never forget. I had now finished my crowdfunder with over 5,000 pounds, and I'd also received offline pledges, including money from my school's charity day, which meant I had, had over 7,000 pounds worth of boxes for Cornish women. I now needed to get more boxes out. So I began working with an organization called Cosgarn Hall. They provide support and accommodation, and they also operate an alcohol and substance tolerant policy. They're the only place in Cornwall like this. 
I went down to deliver some boxes to the women living in the accommodation. I gave them each a box and I watched nervously as they unwrapped it. They said that it was an amazing thing that could change so many lives and it was a great feeling to know that my idea had become a reality. And I'm proud to say that they will have continuing support for as long as I can fund it. It would be amazing if street camps could, be could become a solution for women wherever it is needed. But I am just a 15 year old who hasn't even started her GCSEs yet. And so I want to pass the street camps name over to people who think they could take street camps to where they live. One person can make a huge difference. So if you feel like you could take street camps to where you live, or pass it on to someone you know would love to get involved, then feel free to get in touch. Or if you want to help in other ways, you can visit my Street Camps website for information on how you can help. Thank you.